Hey there, I'm over here now in this corner. Um, I'm going to be doing a video about the types of field research. So in the research video, or the defining research video, I mentioned that research is reviewing resources. There are a lot of types of resources, and you're probably familiar with secondary sources, things like books and journal articles. But there's also field research methods, or field research. Field research is when you do research in the field. <laughs> um, what that means is, that's a bad definition, what that means is that field research is when a researcher gathers and analyzes data firsthand or directly, so like in the field, rather than getting the data analysis or interpretation from someone else. So you've probably done a lot of research that's secondary based. You've been a good finder. You've gone to the library and you've gathered a lot of resources. But field research, it's a matter of you conducting experiments or conducting analysis yourself. Why have field research? Why can't you spend the rest of your life just looking at database articles and library books? Well, life is always changing, and if life is always changing, we're going to have new problems, developments. There's always going to be some sort of gap that can be filled or addressed with research. Like an example would be um, a new hurricane comes. And we need to decide like how much funding should be distributed to those areas affected. We could reference that from Hurricane Katrina, but we also should probably gather data about the most current hurricane to better and more, more accurately understand the issue. It wouldn't make sense to always rely on older information. To be more specific about field research, there are four types of methods, which just means ways you can conduct the data. For this video, I'm going to break down each method into more specific details, and I'm going to give you lots of examples, because I think the more examples, the more you can see what the method is. So the four methods, to clarify, are interview, observation, survey, and artifact analysis. Let's start with interviews. An interview is a conversation where the researcher initiates the conversation by questioning. So I ask you something, you respond. Your response becomes my qualitative data. The qualitative here means I'm working with words rather than numbers. So I'm trying to elicit words from another person. And with those words, I can focus on people's thoughts, experiences, and feelings because words have a lot of hidden meaning. The vocabulary someone uses or the phrases they use or the topics they address all reveal something about people or the dynamics of being human. So I think there's a lot of value in that. Some examples, um, I have an example with myself, and that would be one-on-one -on -one conferencing with students. When I get to meet with a student face-to-face one-on-one, so like through WebEx or Zoom, I get to ask them questions and see their response. They get to elaborate on their feelings and their thoughts so I can better understand them. And it would be more accurate to do this than to just trust test scores. I'm sure you know the frustration of being boiled down to a, like a test score, like your SAT score. You know that doesn't accurately represent you. You want to be able to talk about things. Uh, another example would be a job interview. The interviewee is trying to, or interviewer, is trying to suss out your, um, your weaknesses and your strengths, trying to better understand you as a person. Another example is an ethnographic study. This is um, a collection of interviews that focus on like a minority population or some specific population. So you could interview women about their experiences in STEM, or you could interview um, minorities about like their experiences growing up with like racism or xenophobia. Just focused on people the big takeaway from interviews. Okay, next then is observation. An observation is watching a scene and recording what is noticed or recording given certain criteria. So the focus here is on an event in real time, watching it unfold without like really restrictions or being able to watch it again. Uh, I note here that it should be with certain criteria. It should be something that's quantifiable so you get numbers out of it. The reason you want to do that is because subjective data is an accurate data and it's hard to analyze and interpret when it's subjective. 
So like if I was observing like a coffee shop and how many people came into the coffee shop, I should do something like 50 people came into the coffee shop or 10 people came within the first 30 minutes. That's good data. But if I'm like, <laughs> too many people came to this coffee shop, or if I was like, a lot of people came in, what does it mean to be a lot or too many? More accurate to do quantified data for an observation. Uh, for an observation example would be teacher evaluations. So I know I have some teaching majors in here. Get ready for evals. Uh, admin comes into your classroom in your teaching. They're going to have some piece of paper with a bunch of criteria that they're looking for. And in your 90 minute teaching, they're going to tally up every time one of those things happen. So it'll be something like, how often do students raise hands? Uh, how often are students off task? How long does she lecture? Um, did she ever break students into small groups? How often? And then they'll be like, oh yeah, students raised their hand 10 times or one student was off task for 30 minutes. She lectured for 45 minutes, so much. Gathering this type of data to make us some sort of conclusion. Uh, other example would be marketing assessment. That's uh, um, common with like when they release an ad campaign, they like to see the traffic. So if they put an ad on Facebook, how many people clicked on the ad? How many people clicked on the website after seeing the ad? And that helps them, um, after they observe that, it helps them see if the campaign was good. Uh, psychological evaluation, really common for children. Uh, they usually have someone come in and like observe the child in a room or in a classroom. And then from there they can diagnose like, oh, that student might have autism or that child might have ADHD based on what they observed. I also included Super Nanny, which I don't think is uh, anyone knows about anymore, but it's a show where a woman um, helps parents be better parents. And it involves her observing how the parents go about taking care of their children, and it's usually a disaster, so it makes for choice entertainment. <laughs> uh, the next uh, field research method is a survey, which I'm sure you've taken um, plenty of surveys in your life. It's a lot like an interview in that it's going to ask questions to elicit response. However, an interview gives you like words, you know, elaborate details, whereas a survey is meant to be quick. Like, you want just short answers, so it's going to be limited response and closed questions. It's going to be multiple choice, uh, Likert scales, or like check boxes. Very easily quantified data. The focus of a survey is to generalize a large group. So interviews let you focus on people, like individuals. Uh, surveys let you try and generalize a huge population. Uh, some examples would be the intro survey that I had you guys take. Uh, the survey was just helping me see generalized or generalized the class as a whole because I had not yet got to know you individually. Uh, another example, a product review. You buy like pants or a shirt online and then you fill out a review. It'll be like, how was the sizing? How was the quality? Did it arrive on time? And it lets you like rate by criteria. Uh, a needs assessment. Uh, this is sort of like the intro survey, but it's used a lot with like needs analysis with behavioral uh, conditions or linguistics. So you distribute and you see where students are at and what they need help with. And then a really relevant example is a political poll trying to predict uh, what the election will be like based on how people are voting within a little poll. The last example or the last type of field research is an artifact analysis. This one I think students struggle with the most to comprehend, even though you've probably done a ton of artifact analysis in your life. Um, if you've done like a lit, a lit paper, you've done artifact analysis. Um, artifact analysis is when you assess a cultural artifact for criteria. And that way it's a lot like an observation. Um, instead of doing something though that's an event, you're doing an, an object, an artifact. And just like an observation, you're doing criteria that can be quantified. The focus here is on objects. Why focus on an object? Objects have a lot of cultural value. They really represent um, a time period, what they're thinking or feeling. And that's why we have like art museums and history museums. Some examples of artifact analysis other than like a wet paper, uh, grading an essay. The essay is the artifact, and then my rubric is the criteria. And I use that rubric to quantify your paper in some manner. 
and it tells me a lot about where students are at and what they understand. Some other examples would be um, analyzing queer representation in TV shows. You might gather um, the names of the people who wrote the show, directed it, and see their like gender identity and sexual orientation. You might do it with characters. You might pick like, the top five shows right now. You watch them and you record all the characters. You record if, what their representation is. And if it's like positive or negative, they'll let you know about like acceptance and change uh, culturally regarding those issues. Another example is like nutrition. Uh, I usually give an article in class of um, some students who compared nutrition of like food on campus with food off campus and found that like some food on campus was very unhealthy. So that's an example of you're looking at nutrition facts as the artifact and your criteria is like sugar has to be below this many grams. I also include artificial intelligence because the whole premise of artificial intelligence is artifact analysis. This computer basically is fed artifacts and from those artifacts it pulls, tallies, or quantifies certain criteria to try and predict things. Like every time you go to Google something, Google has used every previous search from people as an artifact to try and predict what you're going to search, which is why it tries to autocomplete things. So that's another example of artifact analysis. So I've covered uh, in a lot of detail these four methods. So here's a, a nice summary page to help you uh, if you want to screenshot that. The focus again though is this is these are all methods where you get the data and they'll be quite relevant when you do the big paper and project one. Um, they're a little hard to understand I think in the sense of research. They probably make sense like I've seen interviews, I've done surveys, but is it, what does it mean for me to do an interview or me to do a survey? So with that I'm going to end on the note that we're going to practice every one of these methods and so by the end you'll be a lot more comfortable conducting each of the methods. Thanks for listening.